there. Welcome to Zero to Free. I am your host, Mugwena Molota, and thank you so much for joining us for yet another episode. And in today's episode, we are looking at reality versus the expectations, or well, reality versus expectations of a freelancer. So because we know that um, with freelancing, this, this glamorized narrative of simply being your own boss, making your own money, but there's always that constant conflict once you enter into a free, as a freelancer, then you find out that the reality is totally different from what you've been sold. Basically, you've been sold some dreams. So we're going to be talking more about that um, with our guest today. And we've got Mashudu Malefe, and he is a researcher for, a fin, for fintech companies and also a copywriter. And we've also got another guest, and he is Tabo Masilela, and he is the co-founder and main producer at the fourth Psycho Production Company. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you for having us. All right. I just always want to start off um, by you know knowing exactly what you do. So I'm going to start off with you, Mashudu. What are you, as a researcher, what are you researching in these fintech companies? Yeah. So, quick correction. Um, I'm not essentially like a researcher at fintech companies or for fintech companies. Mm -hmm. So, like, I research mainly in fintech but i do research in tech okay um so i've done research in web3 which is big right now um specific like cryptocurrency projects um that are making like, strides in so wait what are, what are you researching are you researching like so so like um in some context it's like I do, I've done like UX research. So that's like around the user experience. So okay. that could be um, things around like the app. Okay. Um, so, but I'm not like part of the institution. So I, I would be freelancing for an institution that mm -hmm. got the gig. Oh, okay. So, Makes sense. So I would help with the research of like, with the UX research of just like finding out, maybe we have a cohort of users mm -hmm. and then we're just finding out um, essentially how the experience is in some context you're just doing research on a specific um, topic that um, the client gave you so maybe there's just something that they don't understand about a specific market mm -hmm. perhaps it's a fintech that's operating in Europe and they're trying to come into Africa and they're trying to understand like the landscape around Morocco or, so you help them with that and yeah. you need to like come up with an approach of how do you actually go about the research who should be the individuals you talk to like so um, yeah, it's 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 super multifaceted. Okay. And yeah. Um, super multifaceted. Super. <laughs> yeah, like super multifaceted. <laughs> On another level. I learn as I go. You know, like um, yeah. All right. Cool. Tabo, fourth cycle. Yes, so I started a production company, as we said, uh, with three of my friends called Fourth Cycle. That's where the name Fourth came from. Um, there's four of us. Four, four, yeah. <laughs> uh, we basically do everything. We produce every type of content from long form to short form. Uh, obviously, for now, we've, we've started with short form. I think it's the easiest one, you know, creating brands for, creating content for brands, rather. Mm. Uh, like Starbucks and things like that. But it's essentially, we offer all services from development, script writing, everything in between to distribution and marketing. And within the company, I'm the main producer. Main. Main. Main producer. The main. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so um, we're talking about the reality and versus the expectations of freelancing. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys think this glamorized notion of you become your own boss, you can do whatever you want comes from? Shoot. Um, I think for me, uh, it, it, it comes from speaking from my own experience, the way I viewed it, you know, when I was in varsity and all that, being your own boss, you when you're painting the picture for yourself, you obviously try and make sure that the picture is beautiful. You try and make sure that it's perfect. So you kind of forego thinking about all the, the difficulties that will come yeah. with it, all the things that may go wrong on a day to day. You and you focus you kind of zone in on like the, the glamour as you yes. use the word glamorize. You you focus on the beauty, the 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 times where you get people praising you mm. for putting out good work, you know, winning the awards, you're good at what you do, you're established in the industry. Yeah. And I think I might be wrong, but I think a lot of people kind of fall into that trap. You know what I mean? It's good to visualize your future. It's good to set your goals and stuff like that. But it, it kind of sets you up for failure because you have this high expectation of this being so amazing yeah. that you forget that there's actually so much work that goes into a split second of glory. 
and so a split that's second. yeah <laughs> it, it feels like a split second <laughs> you know when you win an award the next Go day it's stage. back to work <laughs> that's it yeah uh, so yeah i think that's that's why it's so glamorized also the independence that comes with it yeah you know uh you you're in, essentially in charge of your own time to a certain extent mm. but that type of independence can make feel someone can, can make someone feel empowered okay. and yeah what do you think comes from machine? Yeah, I think you raised like amazing points. Yeah. Just to add on, so I don't say the same thing. Um, I think um, a part of it is just like fetishizing. So um, people essentially gravitate towards the idea of being their own boss because they see content from one entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> Wanting to like shared this narrative around like this being this fulfilled type of life but i genuinely feel like um freelancing gig work being your own boss Mm. works for certain people and corporate works for certain people so i think um there's really no need to like put the idea across using concepts like that because it's like um you are essentially your own boss because you're running your own life when you're working for a corporate, right? But um, there are certain things or like certain um, approaches to doing work that that like don't work for certain people. Yeah. And that means they should maybe opt for freelancing or the gig economy. But like I think for most people in society, like corporate works i know yeah. people that flourish in those kind of like environments i know people that those kind of systems work for mm-hmm. yeah what is a one entrepreneur i was about to ask <laughs> is, it, is it the same as a lifestyle entrepreneur Where... I, I can't remember or is way. it like i want wanna be premier. yeah so so i think i think the first time i came across the concept was um this venture capitalist i can't remember his name so i'm not gonna try and butcher it but <laughs> Um, I think what he essentially meant by one entrepreneur is like people that like it's like all they do is content, right? Mm-hmm. And it's important. Like we live, we live in like the content era. Like yeah. what we're doing Influences. right now. Yeah, but like it's like it shouldn't just end with conversations, right? Uh-huh. Like let's talk and then let's and then implement. Let's do. Yeah. yeah. So it's like True. it's like the talkers without the doing. You know, some people okay. are really great. Like they produce greater content than people that are actually doing. Right, but they're essentially not doing right. They, they look like they're doing. Mm. Um, they speak like they're they do. doing, but okay. they're not doing. So I, I would say like that's my kind of like um, oh. definition. Because I've, I've, I've never heard of a one entrepreneur. Me neither. Yeah. I'm going that to is, use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to use. Also, it. make sure you. I, I like using like yeah. random, <laughs> random words. I like creating random. No, words. No, I'm so down for anyone I'm that creates like, words. I create words I, all I the time. Play around like words, like I'm yeah. here for that. I'm okay, here with own yeah. dictionary. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mashuri, what are your expectations going into freelancing? Um, so, I have this like principle in life. Uh-huh. Um, so I barely like have expectations besides like having like making myself accountable to some of my own ideas and yeah. goals um, I only have expectations for my parents so with friends it's more like um, a 60-40 thing it's like 40% believability 60% wow. like yeah, that is high. Like it. 60 I don't believe yeah, it. It's like, <laughs> that is high and it's, and it's, and it's not like me being angry at the world but i've been disappointed enough to Mm. know that like putting so much weight on other people's shoulders isn't a good thing so i try to deviate from like having expectations Mm -hmm. but i like i I obviously do have an idea of like what i'm trying to achieve with something but yeah um i'm not too confined like i'm big on pivoting like i'm i'm not too confined in like my my core idea i'm like okay that's what i'm essentially gunning for let's go for it mm-hmm. these are the people that could essentially help um but i'm not like to go find like yo if um she's not working on it then it's gonna feel like mm. everyone's replaceable in my world so mm-hmm. yeah um so Beyonce, i guess it's good yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't count him. Him. <laughs> yeah but um yeah so essentially i i, I approach things with like very little to no expectation. Do you think, though, um, aside from 
we let's not talk about manifestation because not everyone believes in that type of thing. <laughs> yes. But you know, n- not having because to have it at sixty forty sounds like a, a bit pessimistic about yeah. things. You know, about, yeah. does it does it not hinder then your ability to like ideate? Uh, you know. Uh, kind of unlock your imagination to the full possibility of things when a lot of your mental real estate is on things failing or um, the yeah, possibility so, 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 of so, 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 question. Yeah, very, very good question. <laughs> Great question. But um, essentially, I'm not thinking of it. So I, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd say it's just a principle I have in, in life. So it's just in the back of my head. Mm. But I don't approach relationships thinking, hey, I'm going to be disappointed. Mm, okay. But I just, um, I'm, I'm just very open to being disappointed. Okay. I'm very open to failing. Um, I'm right. very open to pivoting, but it doesn't mean that like um, I go into things expecting them to fail. No, like it's it's like more like um, I have this idea. I hope it works out, but then if it doesn't, there's always another way. You know? okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that's just something that's in the back of my head, but it's not something I walk into the room every day thinking. Mm. This like. Like, yeah. hey, bro, you probably have sinister like, intention. <laughs> you know, I'm not like, yeah, I'm not <laughs> overthinking things or anything like that. Yeah. It's just like, like I said, I've been disappointed enough to understand yeah. that putting too much weight on people's shoulders, and sometimes it's not even in a bad way. Yeah, you know, it's just like, it's it's just like, dude, maybe you could, I could say, yo, could you please do one, two, three for me? And you think you're capable, and you're not. Right. And mm. Yeah, it's, it's it happens, <laughs> and so I'm a very empathetic person. Like, yeah. like I really shout at people. I really like get cross because, um, I also believe that if I can't do something, then I shouldn't ask someone else to do it. Sure. So every time I ask someone to do something for me, I can do it. Maybe just not as good, or that's it. The yeah. thought around like me giving the work to that person is not just as good. But if someone lets me down. I'm always capable of doing the work, even if it's the last minute. Like I'm, I, and I always give people deadlines prior to like my deadline. Okay. You know, ah, so I see. yeah, and that's part of like the principle, like just learning, working with people, and just not messing up. And, yeah. And, but it's so like, basically you're open to failure. Very, very like, open to failure. Yes. Whatever. Is that happens. not a lot of pressure though? No, it's not a lot of pressure. It's because like you walk into something yeah. and you're like. I've got, so obviously we all have some form of expectation of Mm. it working out, right? True. But then if it doesn't work out, failure is not a surprise to you. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm talking about... So the test of expectation definitely exists. I can't say like, yes, I'm speaking openly on not having expectations, but like you said, the expectation does exist. It does exist. Like what... But you're it's essentially not like, trying to achieve. It's not like something that you're holding no, on to. No, no but I'm talking life. about when he brought up the fact that any job that he has people doing, he's able to do. I guess I'm thinking of it in like a. Yeah, a I mean, like even at a ministry level, bro. Like I'm not, I'm not like um, a graphic designer, right? Yeah. But I can, I can do anything on Canva, bro. Like, ah, like okay. I, mean, I, I know. Okay. No, what I'm saying is like, hey, I, if, if I got like Canva. a graphic designer and they do it on Photoshop and everything, like it's yeah. gonna be way better. You know, but, it's gonna be, uh, I, but, but, but I'm not, I'm not going to fail to drop the podcast episode because you're not giving me the design. Can, I'm just, I'm going to take it those, Yo, bro, okay. I'm going to take those faces, throw them on Canva, get a font, write a headline. Even if it's just temporary. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, okay. It, okay. And, it's, and it will look good enough. You know, like, it will look good hey. enough. Hey. <laughs> it will look good enough. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. That's my right. plan. I'm, I'm not saying that, like, I, I can do it better than like yeah. the fact that I'm saying like I wouldn't I wouldn't ask someone to do something if I don't think they're better than me at doing it. Okay. You know? okay. Unless it's 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 a it's a so I'm it's just different. confined with time and it's like okay I have too much work yeah. so I'm gonna give you this work because I'm doing this work. But besides that, like if I'm just genuinely giving someone work, mm. I think that like they are better than me at this specific thing. Yeah. And I'm gonna run them that part of my check. You know. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. That's that. that that's freelancing for you. Hey. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, we're gonna do it ourselves. But anyway, <laughs> we're gonna go over to a short air break, and we will be back with more. This podcast is created and sponsored by Moya, a startup that provides a smart money manager that helps freelancers make sense of their numbers and reach their financial goals by providing a mobile app which assists freelancers manage their cash flow, invoices, and tax all in one place. Firstly, Coffees and Convos is returning on the 30th of July, 2022, to give you another opportunity to learn about the world of networking while also getting the chance to put those lessons to use. 
Watch out for more details. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to Moya Monday's weekly newsletter for weekly tips and news about the world of freelancing. This podcast is brought to you by Moya, your guide to successful freelancing. All right, welcome back to from the um, from the ad break. I was going to say welcome back from the episode. Why do I? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so we're back into um, the conversation where we're speaking about realities versus the expectations of being a freelancer. So, I know um, with freelancing, there's always that comparison between corporate and or working for someone rather, yep. and being a freelancer. So, what are the perks? of freelancing do well would you say that the perks of freelancing outweigh the privileges that come with being in a corporate job would i say that i would you yeah okay so personally um so i i followed the saying by bill gates where he said be your boss your own boss as soon as possible Mm. and so straight out of varsity i went into the world of freelancing and being self-employed so i can't really tell you because like things like medical aid i've only had them in a personal capacity where it's like paid for by my dad it's not something that my boss was like okay part of your contract is discovery or whatever so i can't really tell you uh from from where i stand though i i I think and this might just be a bias of inexperience in corporate world uh versus a bias of experience in the gig economy I'd, I'd, I'd say it does for me and it goes back to what he said i think about uh personality traits it, to yes. each their own things certain things work for certain people but i could tell that my the way i work was not suited for like a nine to five office job and i How think you work? just very if if i were to use a word i'd say erratically my work ethic isn't that thing of like i can just zone in and like yeah you know <clears throat> sorry uh, and, and be like, okay, from nine to two, I will work, two is lunch, and then I can't do that. So some days I'll be the most productive person on this planet. I will outwork anyone, and then the next day I don't do a damn thing. One YouTube video turns to a Netflix film, and before you know it, the, the day is over. Yeah. And so I'd say the perks of just having the, the, the independence over your time, yeah. to a certain extent... Um, mm. Obviously, you have clients and their deadlines and their timelines and all that. But I think for for me personally, I would say gig economy and freelancing kind of outweighs corporate work because of that freedom. I'm geared and attracted to that freedom without trying to fetishize it. But like, yeah. it is it is something that I think outweighs anything besides when you're sick, maybe, and you need medical aid. <laughs> yeah, and you need, aid. <laughs> and you you need yeah, it. no. But especially if you live by yourself and if you don't have parents that will. Very true, oh, yeah. very true. So it is it is circumstantial, but I do yeah. believe that in a general sense, being your own boss, you know, being independent, being able to choose the type of work. I think in the ad break we're talking about, you know, you have, it's stressful, but it's the stress that you chose. Yeah. And so if it's the stress that you chose, you're more inclined to, to, to work it out. You'll figure it out and you'll be good. So it, it, there's, corporate doesn't have enough value to offer me to kind of pull, pull me away from Besides maybe stability. And maybe chill it. Money, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> and yourself, my children? Does um, it outweigh like corporate work? In I mean, you don't have my own, experience. Yeah, there. like so, um, I would say that like goes back to like the individual. So mm. personally for me, just as an outsider looking in, um, corporate wasn't... Um, as great as maybe some people would find it. So, yeah. so like I did a lot of interviews with, like, during my final year in varsity, mm. I did a lot of interviews with <clears throat> corporate companies, and I'm big on on asking. Like, I'm very curious. So I'll ask, like, yo, what's the experience like? What? So just from that, it was enough to say, dude, like, this is not for me, mm. and this is like, mm-hmm. and I had the privilege of like attending conferences around the world around like I wanted to go into investment banking so I attended like conferences on investment banking where I was meeting um, where I've like gotten the privilege to meet like guys that work in investment banking at UBS, Morgan Stanley, Credit Mm. Suisse Mm. these are the best investment banks in the world but their lifestyles were still not like that interesting for me like I remember meeting someone and they told me yo I travel, I've been to South Africa and I was like yo how was was your visit because they said I think it was Joburg 
he worked for he was a consultant at McKinsey. Yeah. And and he, he basically said that no, I was only there for a few minutes because we landed at the airport. We went straight to the offices, had a meeting, and then I had to fly back to London. You didn't come to South Africa. So I'm, so, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, so at that level, when people say you have traveled to 20 or 30 countries, that's what you mean. Yeah. You know, that's, yes, that, that's those true. are the passport stamps that you have. So right? few minutes. The passport, stamps, the passport stamps that I have involve like eating the best meals in the city because mm. I spoke to the locals. Like... Um, so I think it goes back to the individual. Um, so personally for me, um, I genuinely like having the freedom of managing my own time. Although like when you have clients, you have a deadline, Yeah. like you're confined to the deadline so I can take naps, I can watch Netflix and work for two days. Yeah. As long as I can (laughs) like, um, execute on the job you know yeah. and on time yeah on time good quality good quality give them value right mm. yeah um i think is important so i think that's the freedom that i see in freelancing um but i didn't like freelancing wasn't something that i was looking for it was just a thing of corporate doesn't work for me i knew yeah. corporate doesn't work for me so i had to find something that does and the gig economy was accommodative to my personality, mm. to what I was looking for in the world and stuff. Yeah. And that's nice. In conclusion, freelancing is better than corporate. <laughs> <laughs> for okay. us. For us. For, for you guys. Because yeah. we can't speak for everyone. Yeah. Speak I'm, for also, I'm also down for that. Because yeah. I had some corporate. Yeah. <laughs> Still <laughs> not for go another day. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to go into <laughs> So then, um, I know you guys are talking about naps. Um, you can watch Netflix anytime. You've got deadlines. Of course, you got deadlines, but like yeah. it's not every single day deadline. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the great parts of working as a freelancer. Mm-hmm. But like, what are the difficulties that you had to face being your own boss? Dude, I'm very like super anxious. Like I'm a Yo. very anxious yeah, no, person. Yeah, anxiety is so, a monster. So <laughs> um, things like payments. You mm. know, I had to learn. I had to learn. Like back to the expectation conversation yeah um me learning that a people i'm gonna deliver or people disappoint me on certain things was like me like that came up because of my anxiety so i was trying to find a way to try to um have the least amount of anxiety with each and every project Mm -hmm. and that involves like speaking on um the invoicing and the payments way before you Take yeah. on the project, and people can turn back on their word, they do. but um, it's that's very important to have those conversations, and then also like planning my time efficiently, especially mm-hmm. if 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 part of executing the project that I need to execute involves other people, then I need to ensure that the deadline that exists for us internally is not the deadline that exists for like the client, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah. I can work on things if I need to work on things and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, Forgot what the question was. Difficulties. In yeah. So, course. so I think the, <laughs> the difficulty for me was just like overcoming the anxiety. Mm. So, um, I kind of through through my journey create like ways systems yeah. to help me mitigate against like being anxious. And so I even like communicate that with clients, like with people, like with with my boss on a project, like. Um, this is how I prefer to communicate things. This is how I prefer to do work. And mm. um, when you've briefed me on a certain thing, just so we're on the same page, this is how I prefer we talk about sure. it. You mm. know, this is how, like, um, like I have say a process of um, speaking on something after we've spoken on it, and that's because it works for me and my anxiety. Like, because I've I've had situations where I've been briefed on certain things and I delivered something completely different <laughs> you know um, because of just how my brain works and how yeah. overly active it is and, but like because I understand myself um, I've learned that I can't have that problem because yeah. clients have expectations right and sometimes your client has another client you know so yeah. you don't want to mess up mm. so to not mess up I have a process of ensuring that like we are clear in what the work essentially it's is true. So, because sometimes briefs like they brief. They are brief, and, and some, then, sometimes briefs are conversations. For some yeah, they people. are conversations, mm. and and, yes. and 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 conversations are like 
you must remember um, when when you think about something, you are going to also think about how you want to put it across from a shudu. Yes. So you essentially don't put things across the way you're thinking about it. Mm. Or how so, I want or exactly. how I want it to be communicated. Exactly. So once you communicate and then I consume it how so by the time it gets to me it's, it's a, like, a different story. It's a totally different yeah. story. So for me it's better to write everything down as we're speaking and then after um, send you a, a, a document with everything that we spoke on and everything we need to execute on yeah. and sort of like the process maybe that I'm, I, I will follow. And then yeah. that, that, that helps with like overcoming that specific problem. Mm. But essentially the problems I've come across all go back to like my anxiety and just trying to overcome that by making processes simple yeah. and seamless. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think for myself it's I think the one thing you can never doubt about corporate is the safety net that it gives you That's for sure. in terms of, you know, stability and all of that. And so to go <clears throat> from a very safe, safe net of being a student straight into being self-employed and being your own boss, that safety net is kind of ripped from beneath you, you know, rather than taken out eventually with the jobs that you take here and there. And so I think... Uh, Compounding that issue is the fact that you you go in with inexperience. I mean, I remember when I was talking to my former producing lecturer, she told me at the end of my third year that you guys only know twenty five percent of the job. Hi, Bo. And three years for. exactly, that's what I in my head that was it. But yeah. this is one of those industries where experience is better than theory, you know, and learning and taking. You actually have to do the things to know them. Yeah. And so when she told me about that whole 25% and you still have to learn the other 75, for me, I was also still trying to figure out who I am. And so it was very difficult being my own boss because it's like, how do I lead people when I'm trying to learn about learn me? Do you know what I mean? Uh, and so that was one of the, the biggest difficulties or obstacles that I had to overcome. Again, not being too... Uh, fixated on having everything figured out, sure. but allowing yourself to be fluid enough to learn on the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it was nice. I think I have the privilege of being, you know, one of the youngest people everywhere I go with, be it in my company, be it in, so p seeing people who are older than me still figuring it out themselves goes a long way in like calming myself down. I'm like, I'm still 22. <laughs> I'm not saying that I can mess up on purpose, yeah, but, but if things don't go the way I, I saw them in my head, yeah. it's okay. So I think getting to that realization was a very difficult process for me in being my own boss. And I think since I've been there, it's not to say I'm there 24-7. There are still anxieties. I think yeah. everyone goes through an anxiety, uh, but it's easier to overcome it when you just remind yourself that you're better than you were yesterday. That's true. So basically, it's not easy being a freelancer because all the difficulties that you guys are facing as your own boss, it does. Percent. And I'm sure there's more, of mm. course. Like, a lot more. Yeah, right? <laughs> a lot more. Right. So then, um, just closing off, right? Uh, what is the one key lesson in your freelancing journey that you've learned that you didn't expect at all? I, Keep it nice, short, and sweet. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's something I didn't expect. I think it's something that we've been taught. But when you go through the process, it kind of hits you even more how true it is, mm. is the importance of people. Um, even if it's not on a professional level, but I guess as a freelancer, you know, being it's such an individual based, it's an individualistic, yeah. Yeah, individualistic uh, job. <laughs> where you have to be, you, you feel like you're alone in this box and you kind of feel confined because you are the product, you are the service yeah. or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, but people are there who not only can help you but are willing to help you. Mm -hmm. And so it's about going back and really seeing who your people are and then really doubling down on those relationships and, and, and you know, not putting too much pressure on yourself to have everything right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not a camera guy. And it, I, I was always <laughs> jealous of people when they can look at a camera and just be like, okay, yeah, but this is the problem and this is the... Yeah. But then it's like, you don't actually have to know that. You know what I mean? Know enough and learn as you go, but there are people there to help you. And I think that's the one lesson I'd impart on everyone watching. I like that. I really like that one. All right, so Mashudu, what is your key lesson in like um, your freelancing journey that you learned that you didn't expect? Mm. I would say that like um, you're way better than your wildest imaginations. Mm. 
Mm. So it's like, um, allow yourself. So back on like what you were saying about people. Yeah. It could have came across like I'm not that invested in people, but it's 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 people that believe in you and invest in you if like you put out your best work every time. So mm. when people bet on you, um, take on those like opportunities, even if it isn't essentially something that you specialize in or you're good at. Mm-hmm. So personally I um, started off wanting to like just be a specialist in fintech. But then walking in I realized through other people betting on me that dude like you can work on so many other projects because mm-hmm. There are certain best practices that you've learned from what you've done in the fintech ecosystem that you can um, like um, implement with other things yeah. and that could help you with other projects. So I think you need to bet on yourself and understand that you're way better than you imagine. Like there's, I'm not big on neuroscience, but like there's this thing around like the the amount of capacity of our brain that we use in our entire lifetime is mm-hmm. super minuscule mm-hmm. yeah. right so 10%. Uh, yes yeah. and and i yeah, like right. most people <laughs> weigh less than that i i'm guessing right? so <laughs> it's like oh, damn. you can only imagine what <laughs> your brain funny. is capable of yeah right so as long as you push yourself um you'll be surprised what you can do so essentially that's the key lesson i've learned is um i shouldn't be afraid of being thrown into um, the deep end, the deep end yeah. you know because that can help you become a monster like a warrior a great swimmer a goat a great swimmer <laughs> yeah, yeah. alright I mean like those so people make sure that you you know you're working with people and mm-hmm. utilizing them and then don't box yourself basically yeah I love that Amen. thank you so much guys I think this was a really great conversation around the expectations and reality and we hope that our viewers or our listeners will not be taking just the glamorized mm. um, version of freelancing, but will really take the holistic and the reality of freelancing. So thank you very much um, for joining us. Um, we want to thank our sponsor, Moya Money, um, for sponsoring and producing this very podcast. We will see you in another episode. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.